Hi, my name is Ayushi Verma and today I will be talking you through the working for my homework. Um, so this is homework two and I'll be talking you through question five of chapter three from the textbook. So we're given a Euclidean vector space R5 and from this we consider a, a subset of this space and U and a vector X which is in this um, vector space. So U is the span of these four vectors over here and X is this vector over here. So the question is, the first part of the question is to determine the orthogonal projection of X onto U. So in order to solve this question, the first thing we need to do is find a basis for this subspace U. So in order to find a basis, what we need to do is put these four vectors into a matrix and use Gaussian elimination, put this into a row echelon form and determine which one of the corresponding vectors are linearly independent. And the linearly independent vectors will be forming the basis for U. So I'll talk you through this process as well. So we have put each one of these four vectors into a matrix so the columns of this matrix correspond to each one of those vectors. Um, the first thing we're going to do is get this one on top and swap it with that zero. Um, so swapping the first and second rows. Now we have this, the, now we have the row with the negative one um, as the first row and the row with the zero here in, in, in the second row. So we're going to multiply this first row by negative 1 to get rid of that negative sign. And now we have 1, 3, negative 4, and 3. Okay, so now what we can do is use this first row, um, use multiples of it, and do some arithmetic on the third and fifth rows in order to get rid of the 2s in, 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 in the first um, column um, of those rows. So we do those calculations and we end up with this matrix over here. So we find that now we have one in the first column and zeros below it. Okay, this is starting to look like it's in row echelon form, but there's still a lot of work to be done. So we find that we have in the second row zero, one, negative three, and negative one. Well, how about we use that second row and use multiples of it to transform the other four rows. So that's first, third, fourth, and fifth rows. Um, so we perform these uh, operations on it, and we end up with this matrix over here. So after doing all that math, we now have almost row echelon form for the first and second columns, and we can continue doing the same for the other two columns. So how about let's get rid of these negative sixes, turn this into a one and a one um, by multiplying the third row by negative six. So we do that and now we have zero, zero, one, one for that third row. Um, this is now great to be able to use to transform the other rows. So we use that third row um, using multiples of it and adding to the um, first, second, fourth and fifth rows. So we perform all those calculations and now we end up with this row echelon form matrix. So we find that the, the first, second, and third columns of this matrix are linearly independent. The last column, the fourth column, is not linearly independent. This one is linearly dependent on the other rows because this one does not have a pivot um, in lieu of the zero. So we say that the vectors that correspond to this first, second, and third columns, these, those corresponding vectors will be forming the basis. So if you go back here, those vectors will be this first, this second, and this third vector. So these three vectors are the basis of U. And we write this out neatly and label it, you know, as matrix B. Um, and now, in order to start being able to calculate the orthogonal projection of um, x, the vector x onto u, we need to cal find, we need to calculate a few more matrices um, or matrix products in this case. So 
First, we need to find b transpose times b, and also we need to find b transpose times the vector x, remembering that b is the basis matrix that we just found here of u, the subspace u. So to make further calculations easier, we just find out b transpose. Um, b transpose is the, the columns of b written as its rows. So this was, so b was a five by three matrix and b transpose is now a three by five matrix. So in order to find b transpose times b, we multiply this by b um, like so. And I have written out the matrix multiplication in explicit detail. Uh, eventually, this boils down to a 3x3 three three matrix looking like this. And finally, to calculate b transpose times x, again, we multiply that b transpose matrix times the vector x. Um, just as a sanity check to check if these two matrices conform, well, b transpose is a 3 times 5 matrix, whereas x is a 5 by 1 matrix. The inner dimensions do conform 5 by 5, and so the resultant matrix will be a 3 by 1 matrix. So we perform the matrix multiplication. I've written that out again in a lot of detail, and we end up with this 3 by 1 matrix, which is B transpose times X. Okay, so we did all of this in order to be able to solve this equation over here, which is B transpose times B, we just calculated that, times a vector lambda, and we equate this to B transpose times X, which is, again, also what we just calculated. So we write this out like this. Um, so this uh, left-hand side matrix, um, 3 by 3 matrix, is the product b transpose times b. We are multiplying this by a vector lambda whose components are lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. And on the right-hand side of the equal sign, we, we, we have the vector product um, b transpose times x, which is um, this vector here. So putting this, well, this is a system of linear equations, and now we want to solve this using Gaussian elimination. Um, putting it into row echelon form. First, however, we will put this into an augmented matrix form. So on the right, uh, sorry, on the left-hand side of this augmented matrix, we have the matrix that corresponds to B transpose B, this three by three matrix over here, and the line which, rep which represents the equal sign. On the right-hand side of this equal sign, or the line, we've got that vector B transpose times X, and so now we do our Gaussian elimination to get this, ma this augmented matrix into row echelon form. So getting rid of the 9 first and foremost, now we are left with 1, 1, 0 because we took 1 ninth of that first row. Um, we can use that first row and knock out the 9 in the second row. Um, so we do that and we end up with a 0, 7, negative 14 in that second row. Well, that's great. Now we can get rid of this 7, turn that into 1 by taking 1 7th of that second row. Um, so this is almost looking to be in row echelon form, almost getting that, stair that staircase structure. So now we use that second row and use multiples of it to transform the other two rows. So the first row and the third row, um, you can see we transformed using these two equations over here. So. Okay, this is now in row echelon form almost, except for this three over here. That needs to be a one. So we take a we take a third of this third row. Now we've got zero, zero, one, and one on the other side. Well, there's still a little more manipulation that we can still do, um, even though this is in row echelon form. So we use that third row and use it to transform the first and second rows and we are left with this resulting reduced row echelon form matrix. So if we solve this system, we are left with the vector lambda. Uh, so lambda one equals negative three, lambda two equals four, and lambda three equals one. And we put this back into the vector lambda. So finally, using all the bits and pieces that we have just calculated, we can put these all together and find out the projection of the vector x 
onto the subspace U. And we do this by multiplying B, which is the subspace, sorry, which is the basis of the subspace U, and multiplying it by that vector lambda. So here we have B, which is this um, five by three matrix, and we've got lambda here, which is that three by one matrix. Again, if we do a sanity check, we check the inner dimensions, which are three by three. So yes, the inner dimensions conform, leaving us with outer dimensions of five by one. So whatever B times lambda is, it should give us a five by one um, resulting matrix. Okay, so we go off and we do this uh, very detailed matrix multiplication, and eventually we end up with this projection. So 1, negative 5, negative 1, 10, negative 2, and 3. This is the projection of the vector x onto the subspace of u. There you have it. So the second part of the question was to determine the distance between the vector x and the subspace u. So, in fact, we can do this by subtracting the projection that we just found up here from the vector x. So we take the difference between both of those vectors, which thankfully are the same dimension, 5 by 1, um, and so we're left with this resulting 5 by 1 difference vector. Um, and we need to take the norm of this in order to find that distance. So what does taking the norm mean? Well, it take, taking the norm means that we multiply the transpose of this vector over here um, by itself, and we take the square root of whatever this inner dot product comes out to be. So again, I've written out in detail what this inner dot product is, um, and that comes out to be root 60. If you simplify that a little bit more, that comes out to be 2 times root 15. Um, and if you want to be more specific, you find out that in decimal format, this is roughly approximate to 7.5 units of distance. So whatever your units of distance are in this vector subspace, um, sorry, vector space, uh, the distance between the vector x and the subspace u is 7.75 units. Thank you.